Well, it's winter 2023 and what can I say? There's been a lot of new anime coming out. So much in fact that I tallied up all the shows I was watching a few days ago and overall I'm watching around 30 plus shows at the moment. Not exactly what I had in mind when I started my journey. But on the bright side, this season is jam packed with different anime. You have your pop idol anime, your rom-com anime and your isekais. A lot of isekais I might add. So going through these shows is going to take some time. So I figured I would single out those that to me stand out among the crowd. So what's first? Ah, Revengers. Yeah, I'm still not sold on the name personally, but Revengers is a Japanese original TV series set in feudal Japan and already I was really curious. So I'm not ashamed to admit that I love my samurai flicks. I mean, I studied film back in university where I was introduced to Akira Kurosawa movies and yes, this video has already been derailed. But it's crazy to think that this director would inspire an entire generation of filmmakers and it's easy to see why when you watch his films. Sure, not many of you watch black and white films, but it's amazing how timeless they are. I mean, look at all this. So yeah, I love a good samurai film, but I don't think I watch a lot of samurai anime. I'm aware of some like Rurouni Ken- Oh, and I have the Vagabond manga, although it is a lot to chew through. Oh yeah, there was that Yasuke show, which was terrible. What a letdown. Oh. It's been a while to say the least, and hopefully Revengers can satisfy this hunger I've been missing. So the show is animated by Aija Do, and I can't say I'm too familiar with their works unfortunately, but they seem to have an impressive lineup behind them. But the story and writing will be handled by Nitrofus, who I was surprised to learn is a visual novel developer who had their hand in quite a few visual novels you may have heard of, like Sayuna Uta, Steins Gate, and Fate Zero. So I guess one of the writers with Nitro Plus had an idea and they decided to collab with Aija Do to make it and the writer in question is none other than Gen Urobuchi himself. Man that's a name I haven't heard in quite a while and it definitely brings back old memories. I remember watching a few episodes of Psychopaths back in secondary school but due to exams I never finished the series although I do remember enjoying the show. But Madoka Magica, wow, it's been two years since I finished the series and what a roller coaster that was. Honestly, one of the best anime shows I've ever seen and even to this day, it blows my mind. If you want to see that ride, then check out my Madoka Magica reaction videos to see the fireworks for yourself. <laughs> oh my dear, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> You sweet innocent child. So what started as mild curiosity quickly turned into genuine excitement so I couldn't wait to dig in and see what the creators have in store for us. So without further ado, let's get into this. So the story begins in feudal Japan and we are introduced to Raizo Kurima, a samurai part of the Satsuma clan who has been dispatched by his master to kill Hirata for smuggling opium into Japan and who also happens to be Raizo's father-in-law. Raizo swiftly kills him and his bodyguards but before he succumbs to his wounds, Hirata takes out a gold coin and bites on it. This coin is retrieved by an unknown figure who catches up to Raizo under a bridge. The man introduces himself as Yun Usui who is a simple handyman that takes odd jobs here and there. He tries to recruit Raizo into his line of work but of course Raizo is suspicious and refuses his offer. He joins up with the rest of his clan outside the village. However, treachery was afoot as Raizo's master had set him up and sent his goons to kill him. But before they can do that, Raizo jumps into the river below but instead of dying he is rescued and is returned to Yuen. And it's here that Raizo is introduced to a clandestine group called Rebengia who helps to settle blood debts of those who are wronged. Now that is something isn't it? I mean I knew I was watching an Urobuchi show but I was not expecting this amount of violence so soon. But man was it awesome to see Raizo cut these frankly innocent men down. And we're only a few episodes in and this show has really killed it with the setting. I never knew I could enjoy a revenge thriller so much. I mean most revenge shows have this problem where it focuses too much on the revenge. So much so that it just loses a lot of depth in its story as the focus becomes more about seeing certain characters die in horrible ways. But here the revenge is handled by third party and instead we get to know more about this motley crew who have disgustingly taken Raizo in as they go about their duties while also moonlighting as killers for hire. And as the story unfolds, we see a number of strands that lead to something much bigger. I'm not sure what just yet, but I can just feel the series unfold in a way I can't even imagine. 
But that's not all, because the action in this show is so good, and while it does have a historical setting, we see a bit of anime magic as things can get a bit bonkers. How you might ask? Well in the second episode, we see this bear of a doctor play a role in an assassination as he climbs up a roof with his compound bow, which is definitely too advanced for this time, and it requires so much power to draw that he rips his clothes and his skin turns red. I mean you can't make up how ridiculous this is, but I love it so freaking much. It's cool seeing anime mess around with realism like this, and it puts a smile on my face. It's funny because I was originally thinking we would see Raizo doing those single stroke battle slashes you see in other mediums. You know, the one where the samurai runs at the hero, the MC makes one slash, and all of a sudden, the guys are full of blood. I mean we see it here too, but the writers have really thought outside the box for these kills, and so far, I loved every single one of them. Like Raizo, running through water using spiky shoes to slice a guy while screaming like a Majima. Or Neo, who prefers to slice people with his kite strings. And Soji, who uses his cards like shuriken. But the most ridiculous and frankly bonkers kill goes to Ewan, who uses gold leafing to stick on his targets. And watching them suffocate from a fragile gold sheet is just amazing. It's been a while since I've seen some ingenious kills and this show absolutely nails it. Seeing this amount of violence is just a reminder of why I love Urobuchi's work so much. Unlike typical Urobuchi, this show can get pretty dark. I mean, if you remember from earlier, Raizo killed his father-in-law, so after settling his own revenge, he quickly returns home to find his wife had committed suicide. And boy does that first episode end on a downer. And that's not all as later on the group heads off into the slums and comes across a cave of what appears to be corpses, except they ain't dead. All of them are alive and dying as they beg for medicine from the master that wronged them. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, so I can't wait to see how messed up this show will get, since it's clear that this is going to get worse. Much worse. So yeah, those are my first impressions on Revengers, and so far it's building up to be an interesting show, and I just wish more people were talking about it. But I'm glad that I gave this show a chance considering the 30 plus shows coming out this winter. And I'd love to know what you guys think. Because this season man, I've got my work cut out. How about you Mifone Summer? <laughs> ah, good to know.